Welcome to St Albans. For the past 11 months, I've worked just up the road at the Trans-European Division offices. There, I've met people who come from lots of different countries. Not only that, but they have a wide range of experience between them. So there's a lot of cultural knowledge there. This Christmas season, I'm interested in learning how they do Christmas. What are the family traditions that they hold dear? And because I'm a foodie, I'm particularly interested in learning about the types of foods that they might prepare at this time of the year that they might want to share with other people. So let's go and meet them and learn a bit more. Christmas dinner in the Holford home is quite elaborate because when we all get together as a wider family, we're from Denmark, Poland, England, Germany, Argentina, Chile. Um, but one thing my family always has to have, even if the other Holfords are not there, is the Danish rice pudding with almonds in it and cherry sauce. I love krempita, which is a cream cake in Serbia. I have my birthday on Christmas Day and I bake a nice cake and make gingerbread houses for my family and friends and for my TD family as well. The traditional Christmas food in Czech Republic or Slovakia is fried fish, usually carp. As vegetarians we have different options, so we have some sandwiches, some vegetable salads, whatever the boys prefer who come home for Christmas and so it's a joyful family time. My favourite Christmas food has always been my nan's homemade Christmas pudding. Even though I'm Brazilian, I married an English girl, so we have a traditional roast on Christmas Day. But the best thing about Christmas is the fellowship we enjoy with friends and family around the table. Our Christmas food is a mixture from everywhere that we've lived. My favourite Christmas dish is a kale and cranberry salad from Sweden. My favourite meal unique Christmas is chapatis and pasta. It usually incorporates um, lots of family members that come together around my parents lounge table and we enjoy lots of food together. Our favourites would probably be lots of cheeses, lots of chocolate. Um, my son loves his big bowl of annual Brussels sprouts which nobody else in the family really enjoys and my daughter likes to make gingerbread which often comes out around tea time. My all-time favourite food at Christmas is Brussels sprouts. Cashew and parsnip roast with Brussels sprouts and chestnuts. Yes! It has to be Brussels sprouts and gravy. Homemade cornbread vegetarian sausage stuffing. You know, at Christmas time we always eat pavlova. That's our favorite dessert. And the reason we do that is because it's still, I grew up in Australia and that's the last little bit of Australia we've still got left. We'll be having fufu and granola soup with chicken. A typical Bulgarian Christmas Eve for us would be all about family and sitting together, laughing together, eating together. Um, an Orthodox Christian would have seven vegetarian dishes on the table, which would represent the end of the fasting period, which is usually 40 days before Christmas. So they would have typical things like pumpkin pie, cheese pies, nuts, honey, and they would have a special bread as well with a silver coin inside. Um, which the mother of the house should break for everyone so that everyone can have a piece and the lucky guy would have the silver coin. Poppy seed cake and also I like from Albania a special mixed uh, vegetables uh, baked in oven. When my wife prepares that I really enjoy. And it's funny how I never have the coin and I work in treasury. Christmas starts in our household with making gingerbread cookies. Once we've done that then we can get on with life. And our favourite food is turkey, but vegetarian turkey. 
In our family, we get two Christmases. Portuguese on Christmas Eve, where they have the traditional baclion, codfish, potato, cabbage. I don't have any of that. Christmas Day, the more traditional Christmas in England, but for us as vegetarian, and equally for my family in Denmark and in America and in Norway, we have stuffed nuttoline. It is delicious. In our home, every Sabbath is like Christmas. Now that we've taken our festive culinary adventure around the TD office, there's one more person left to share, and that's me. In our home, we don't have anything in particular that we have to have every year, but what I do love is macaroni and cheese. And um, actually, my husband's family um, like to prepare a dish that they have on Christmas morning with bread called pepper pot, which is a mix of um, different meats um, stewed up, it's a brown stew, and it is very tasty. Once we moved to this country, um, I learned that I quite like vegetarian stuffing, uh, and mince pies, you know, all the things that you get at Christmas lunch at school. But as an adult, I've grown to really love dairy-free eggnog, which I miss for the rest of the year round. But of course, we have to remember that at this time of the year, people's minds are not just on food or festivities. They're focused on the Bible. They're focused on the birth of Jesus. Silent night, holy night, darkness lies, all is right. I'm hungry after all this talk about food, and I'm thankful for the office family here, the office team, who are so committed in their calling to do God's work. When I think about Christmas at this time of the year, I think about the chorus, glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, and goodwill to women and men. Goodwill, being polite, being gracious, being kind. I don't think we do enough of this in our day and age. Our society, which is broken, Many of them living in darkness, they're struggling. They need that graciousness, the graciousness of Jesus Christ reflected in the disciples here on this earth. When I walk down the street here in St. Albans in the town that we live, I see homeless people. Sometimes homeless people sleeping under the roof of a shop or other places. And I say, wow, homeless people who don't have a roof over their head to sleep at night. Then I think about our office family. We gathered yesterday for our Christmas annual party. And there was a wonderful initiative to collect gifts, to donate gifts for a refuge shelter here in St. Albans. What a blessing, what a way, a practical way to show graciousness, kindness, goodwill to the other. You know, I think about Jesus Christ's birth. He was homeless and later the, the flight to Egypt. Again, he's homeless. I think about the 65.6 .6 million displaced refugees, people around the world, where we stretch to them to show graciousness, to show kindness. You know, one side of the spectrum, you have graciousness, and the other side of the spectrum, you have entitlement, and they compete with each other. The Bible, the narrative Bible that I read, is about showing Christian values graciousness to the other. So I encourage you to embrace Christian values as Christmas by showing graciousness, by showing goodwill to the other, to your neighbors, to people at work, to your family members. And may God bless you. Silent time.